Hello, Nick. It's Tuesday. Nick, to answer your question, I define sports thusly. Diversion, recreation, or pleasant pastime. And by that definition, I would have to say that my favorite sport is reading. While I realize this wasn't the answer you were looking for, I have to tell you that because I have a project, and you're about to be part of it. I'm also telling you all this because I feel extremely passionate about it. I have just finished reading this book. It's called Where Things Come Back by John Corey Whaley, and I'm about to tell you and everyone else that watches our videos exactly why they should buy or read it. You don't actually have to buy it, I'll just give you my copy. But everyone else that isn't you has no excuse not to buy it. Unless, unless they already have it, actually. I'm trying to make this video as quick as possible for two reasons. One, I have a lot of information to convey and only five minutes in which to convey it. Two, I am an awake person in a world of sleeping people and I don't want to be an awake person that creates more awake people. Before I get any further, I'd like to ask you a question. Have you ever felt stuck? I don't necessarily mean physically stuck, though that could count, like, geographically. But think more specifically about being stuck within a single emotion or a single routine, and what that feels like, or how that affects you. Usually, in order to get unstuck, we need something to change. Otherwise, we just wait around in a stuck state, waiting for something to unstick us, which unfortunately usually leaves us stuck for a good long time. This book, in a lot of ways, addresses that stuckness. Where Things Come Back is a story about a boy named Cullen Witter, who lives in a town called Lily, Arkansas, which is located halfway between Little Rock, Arkansas, and Memphis, Tennessee. Lily, I found out, is a fictional place. However, after some research, I found out that it's almost definitely based on this place called Brinkley, Arkansas, which, similarly, finds itself halfway between Little Rock and Memphis. It's even known for having a slogan, we'll meet you halfway. In the book, a species of woodpecker called the Lazarus is reported to have been sighted near Lily. After about 60 years of its supposed extinction, and as a way too cool side note, I found out that Brinkley, Arkansas is the closest town to the Cache River National Wildlife Refuge, where, in 2004, the ivory-billed woodpecker was supposedly rediscovered after having been extinct for 60 years, just like the Lazarus in the book. I checked up on the facts. There's some really cool stuff about it that you can learn. Read the Wikipedia and do some extra Googling, which is always necessary to make sure you have all the real hard facts. Not only does this book have a lot of information about the weird and cool phenomenon of a bird re-emerging after plenty of decades of extinction, but it's also important because it's very relatable in the lives of teenagers today. It deals with things that are relevant to us as young adults. Big and difficult things, like loss, death, and the struggle for self-identity. Noting the particular difficulty of that struggle in a world that tries to choose your identity for you. Also, and I can't really stress this enough, this book won the Prince Award. Prince Award, right there. The Prince Award is the highest honor that a young adult book can receive. They've been awarding the honor to one book every year since 2000. And among the winners, I'd like to point out, is John Green's Looking for Alaska. One of the most important characters in this book is Gabriel Witter, Cullen's brother. Gabriel is praised constantly for his independence and lack of conformity. I think it's pretty clear that when the wisest or most important character in a book is touted the way that Gabriel is, it influences its readers to use this character as an example by which they live their own lives. The same way that I, in my own life, have consciously done things that I believe that Catcher in the Rye's Holden Caulfield would have done because I looked up to him. He was sort of a role model for me, which is the single explanation for my thorough omission of the word grand from my vocabulary since I read that book in high school. Gabriel Witter's eccentric taste in music is also noted in the book several times. In fact, without naming the songs, the author makes mention of four different tunes in particular, both We Won't Need Legs to Stand and Chicago by Sufjan Stevens, Staring at the Sun by TV on the Radio, and Here I Am, Lord, a church hymn. I listened to all four of those while I was reading the book when they mentioned them in the book, and I really enjoyed all of them, so I think, I think you would do well to click some of those links. On a personal level, I definitely connect with this book in a lot of ways. Having spent about half of my life as a teenager, I understand Cullen Witter's feelings of being stuck. Feeling like a real and different and exciting future isn't really possible. But I've also been someone that's had to deal with death and loss in my life. And I honestly wish that I had been able to read this book at that time to help me understand it a little bit better. And even if I read it and still didn't understand what I was going through, at least I had the ability to say, someone else did, and someone else knows what I feel. This book also deals with important questions about religion and belief and fate and serendipity. And I think that all of those things are big questions, psychological and 
and theological questions that come up in teenagers' lives pretty often. In addition to all those like literary and cool booky things, it's neat to see the cultural development of a small town based on this idea that finally there's something that can bring people into our town and give new life to our town. Overall, and especially because it's his first book, John Corey Whaley did an exceptionally good job at creating this story and weaving in really important and relevant themes and also staying true to the teenage experience. Also, Nick, thank you for having those people say happy birthday to me. That was really sweet of you. Oddly enough, that's what I was going to do for you for your birthday. My question for you today, I think you might find very obvious. What book, if any, has helped you develop emotionally and mentally? I also encourage commenters to leave their own answers to this question in the comment space below. I'll see you tomorrow.